Hi everyone, Dr. Saul here in Beverly Hills. Today we're going to do a little uh, tutorial about BBL, Brazilian Butt Lift. I know there's a lot of information out there. We're going to just add a little bit more out in the web so you guys can make a very knowledgeable decision when you decide to do a BBL. It can be safe in safe hands. Uh, that's number one question is if you go to someone that does them, that knows where the fat should go, it is a safe procedure. But let's start with our tutorial today. Um, when you look at the butt, box, uh, it's not just the butt, but we look at the whole uh, aesthetic unit. In some books, there are up to 11 aesthetic units which make the butt. So in order to make it beautiful, we have to look at all these 11. The, when I see a patient, there's four major evaluation I make. I look at the asymmetry. Remember that no one's buttock is the same. Just like breast, buttock are different. The right and the left are different. We'll look at the mid-lateral buttock, the C point, which is an indentation some people have. It's either minimal, moderate, or severe. Then we'll look at the transition from the frame to the torso. And what type of frame you have is important too because everyone has a different type of frame. Let's start with type of, oh, can you slice that and just, okay. Ready? So uh, five main frame evaluation points is types of frame, shape, fat, and bone, the asymmetry, the mid-lateral buttock, transition frame, and the bone contribution to the frame. So these are all evaluations which your surgeon does while examining you. This is regarding symmetry. You can see this patient is cut in half. Here's both of her left side and both of her right side. Obviously they look different. If you do the mirror image of two right side, you can see how high she is here. But if you do two left, you can see it's much smoother. So just to let you guys know, no one is a mirror image of, the, of, the, of themselves, and the right and the left do differ. The mid-lateral C point is right here. You see as the, this is your hip, a lot of people have a little bit of a uh, mild depression here in the lateral aspect, and then it goes into the hips. What type of hip, do you, what type of frame do you have? You can see in our, in our evaluation, we do four. Either an A shape, a B shape, a square, or a round. The ideal is the A shape, where your, where your waistline is proportionally smaller than your waist. So it is possible to transform someone from a V to an A, or from a square to an A, or from a round to an A. So you can see there was a study done as the waist to hip uh, ratio. The ideal waist to hip, hip ratio is somewhere between 0.65 and 0.75 where you have a very natural look. If your waist is half the size of your waistline, you can see it can be kind of cartoonish. Or if it's 0.55, you can see the difference. So the best is somewhere between 0.6 to 0.75, right in this triangular area. A 0.8 is almost straight. So a one would be completely straight. Here's some pictures of someone with a 0 0.8, 0 0.76, 0 0.63, and 0.56. As I said, the natural look is somewhere in the sweet spot between here. Some people like the very super snatch and the 0.8 is usually where we start working on a 1.0 or sometimes even the waist is larger in the V shape than the hips. Then there's the transition from the torso to the waist. You can see the different angulations of the transition from the uh, torso to the waist and this can all be changed. You can see this one is a very straight, curved and this one is almost horizontal there. So these can be changed with lipo contouring. Here's a patient. She has a V-shaped. You can see it's totally V-shaped. 
She has square buttock. And here she is, she has the A-shaped. And the buttock are rounder. Look at the difference. Even the way the undergarment sits on her is different. And so she was changed from a V-shaped to an A-shaped. As we were talking about the mid-lateral C-point, you could see this one is very mild, this one is moderate, and this one is severe. You can see the severity of it right there. These can all be fixed with the, with the placement of small amount of fat to give the fullness that people desire. Another thing we talk about, which, uh, which people refer to as the S-curve, or it's the lordosis, is the back fat. You can see this patient is completely straight, so that's a 90 degree. Some people are 65 and some people 45. Now what can happen is, if you lipocontour this back area, you can change it from the 90 to 65. If you go extreme, you could even go to 45, but usually the 65 is a more natural look. Here's a patient, very almost 90, and you can see now she's at the 65. This was two things. One is first we subtracted the fat here, and then we added some fat here. So the lipocontouring and the creation of the S-curve and the transition of putting fat in the buttock changed her from a 90 to about a 65. So the four units which we take into account, the frame, the muscle, the relationship of muscle to frame, and the aesthetic units. So just remember when you're being evaluated, this is the whole evaluation system. Your surgeon is looking at the different units of your body, and in his mind, he's evaluating all this stuff, and you should go over these with your surgeon. Some people's skeletal relationship is different. You can see the hip point can be a different place and the crest of the hip point can be at different heights. That's regarding how cinched in you can get. It depends on the crest of the hip bone. Uh, different units we could go over. The sacral is very important for the S-curve. This should be totally lipo as much as possible. This is the flank area. Flank area creates the curvature right here. So the more you go in, the more cinched in the waistline will be. Um, sometimes during lipocontouring, patients' uh, dimples of venous, they usually have right here, could be obliterated and gone if we do too much lipo. So just be careful. If you're in love with your dimples of venous, be careful because they might go away with lipocontouring. Then so, and we talk about the outer leg. Now it's very important for females to have some fullness in the outer leg. Because if they don't, then they'll, if they're very straight, it looks like a male silhouette. Females are, when you visualize females, it's the curves that are created. When it's very straight, it gives a male figure. Uh, we talked about this C point. This is, you can see, this is like about a moderate, but this area can be filled out. Some people like it extra full, some like moderate, but that's the C point, which is very important and can be corrected. Then the intragluteal diamond. This is every woman's, I think every woman's dream is to have space in the intragluteal area. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you even have to do surgical excision of skin to create that uh, diamond shaped look. It cannot just be through lipocontouring or fat placement. Sometimes the extra skin to get it has to be excised and you can get some uh, incision right in the gluteal cleft to create that. Some people don't even have a gluteal cleft that goes all the way across. Some people have some that stops halfway. 
and some that go full weight. This can be corrected also by a suture technique which creates a full curve. So in, in summation, there's a lot to take into account as we talked about the different things that are involved. It's not as simple as, okay, let me just put some fat. When you go to your med spa and they wanna put some sculpture in there and stuff, there is more to it. It is a little bit more in depth. So be careful out there. Uh, I hope this adds to your knowledge when you're out there looking to get a BBL done.